So now that you know a little bit about what reactive programming is as a paradigm, let's talk a bit about the Reactive Streams API. And this is something that has an interesting history, and it is a nice segue or a nice continuation from the parallel streams and completable future stuff we talked about before into newer versions of Java, newer versions of modern Java, and then continuing on to frameworks that implement these abstractions. So there's a couple of key abstractions here, namely publishers, subscribers, and subscriptions. So Java 9 and beyond defined a reactive programming API called Reactive Streams. And it had a set of interfaces that were part of what was called the Flow API, the Flow class. And what it did, or what it does, because it's still there, is it adds support for stream-oriented publish-subscribe patterns. What the heck does that mean? So these stream-oriented pub-sub patterns really apply to patterns you may be familiar with, hopefully familiar with, from the Gang of Four book, the Design Patterns Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software book. And there are two patterns that are relevant here. One is the iterator pattern, which applies a pull model where app subscriber or subscribers pull items from a publisher. Basically what they're saying is, this is how many items I can accept before I have to wait and do some processing and then come back and get the next tranche later. And then there's also the observer pattern, which is another Gang of Four pattern, which applies a push model that can be used to have a subscriber react when a publisher source pushes an item or items to subscriber sinks. You could have one or more. So you could have one or more publishers, one or more subscribers. The subscriber says, here's how much I can take. That's the iterator pattern. And the observer pattern is used by the publisher to push the events to the subscriber as they occur. So those are the two key patterns that are relevant in the context of reactive streams and the Flow API. The Flow API itself is actually pretty simple. It defines four interfaces. It defines publisher, subscriber, subscription, and processor, which is kind of a combination, as you can see here, of a publisher and a subscriber. So that's, those are the things that are in the Flow API. And uh, as you can see, again, it's pretty simple. You've got the publisher has a subscribe method that subscribers can use to subscribe. And subscribers have a bunch of callback methods that the publishers and or the processors will call to dispatch events to them. And it, it's also got this hook method, which is kind of a virtual constructor called onSubscribe, which can be used for the publisher to let the subscriber know it's been subscribed and for the subscriber to indicate to the publisher how much data it wants to be sent in, in one chunk or in one set of chunks. Let's talk about the key abstractions in the Flow API. And there are three of them primarily. So the abstractions are publisher, subscriber, and subscription, with processor being kind of things that can be intermediaries that are both publishers and subscribers in a chain or a flow. Publishers are sources of events that can produce zero or more events that can be pushed or that are pushed to subscribers by using some methods we'll talk about in a second defined on the subscriber interface. So that's what a publisher does. It publishes stuff. Gee, what a surprise, right? Subscribers are sinks that register for and consume events that are pushed by one or more publishers. And we'll see what that means in a second. Publishers can publish events to subscribers by calling hook methods on the subscriber. A hook method is just a method that can be overridden by a subclass. And the methods that can be overridden are on next, on error, and on complete. And this little regular expression tells you the semantics of these methods from the point of view of the publisher and subscriber. What this says is that a publisher can publish zero or more on next hook method calls to the subscriber or subscribers. Or it could generate one on error or one on complete method optionally. And it could do absolutely nothing. The publisher doesn't have to publish a darn thing. But if it does publish stuff, it'll publish a zero or more on next hook methods followed by either one on error hook method or one on complete method. Those are mutually exclusive but it never has to do either of those either. 
So it's, it's kind of a, it's actually very expressive, but very concise, but it's a little confusing at first. So let's take a look and see the last piece of the puzzle. The last piece of the puzzle is this thing called subscription, which is an interface that's used to control the flow of events between a publisher and a subscriber. And the way this works is that the subscriber tells the publisher, you can send me this many events before you have to wait for me to tell you to send the next chunk. So for example, if the subscriber says, send me no more than three events, then the publisher will say, sure, on next, on next, on next. And then the subscriber would have to say, OK, send me the next n, which could be 3 or 5 or 10 or whatever. So that's how the information flows back and forth. Here's what happens when these things actually get used. The subscriber starts by subscribing itself to the publisher and by calling the subscribe method, passing itself in, say, hey, subscribe me, please. And that requests the publisher to start streaming data to it. A reactive stream is lazy, much like a regular Java sequential stream or parallel stream. It's lazy, and it doesn't, nothing happens whatsoever until subscribe is called. So that's very important to remember. You have to call subscribe in order for anything to happen. Very much like in Java streams, you have to have a terminal operation called before anything will happen. Similar kind of idea. Once you subscribe, the publisher then calls back to the subscriber and says, hey, all right, you're subscribed now. And the subscriber says, thank you very much. Here's my subscription request. These are the number of items you can send me, you can send me in one fell swoop or before I need to tell you again. And so the way that that works is you can actually give a value here that says, just keep sending me these, the data until you run out. So there is no flow control whatsoever. But you can also give a number. And then you can have what's called flow control. No events are sent by a publisher until the subscriber signals the demand by calling the request method passing on the subscription and uh, passing in the number. Once that happens, then events can start flowing in earnest. So the publisher can call back the on next method to notify the subscriber or subscribers in response to things the publisher fields or gets. And again, there can be zero or more of these notifications. And that's what's called a stream. So a stream in reactive streams is a series of on next calls. If all goes well and everything's done, it's not an indefinite stream. You can have infinite streams, by the way. But if, if you reach a stopping point, then the publisher will call the on complete hook method to the subscriber or subscribers informing it or them that all the events have been set successfully. And if something goes wrong, then the on error hook method is called back to convey the error. And this comes back as something called a throwable, which is basically an exception. So that's what happens for the failure case. So success is the on complete. Failure is the on error method. So that's the end of the overview of the Java Streams API. Now, we don't have time to talk about this today, but when we get back in class next time, we'll talk about what you really do with this API. Because as it turns out, this API by itself is extremely limited, and you couldn't do very much interesting with it. The Reactive Streams frameworks like RxJava or Project Reactor or Akka or whatnot actually give you lots and lots, actually an enormous number of cool things that you can do as operators working on flows that are connected between a publisher or publishers and a subscriber or subscribers. So we'll talk about that starting next time.